sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. This afternoon on the cry of wisdom in the Tell you what, and more to this than what you think. Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and will make known my words unto you. Now hold your place there and go to Proverbs chapter 8. The cry of wisdom. I think the first 
eight, eight chapters or so of the book of Proverbs especially speak of the wisdom personified. And I think that wisdom is personified in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made wisdom to us. And I'll show you that in that in just a minute. In verse number 1 of the 8th chapter of Proverbs, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Now let me say something to you in reading that, those seven or eight verses, or seven verses I guess it is in the eighth chapter. There's only one person that could talk about the opening of his lips, especially where it says, my mouth is shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. I don't know of one man except Jesus Christ that didn't speak somewhere along the line spoke error. Jesus Christ is the truth. He spoke the truth. And he spoke wisdom. He is wisdom personified. He's made unto us wisdom. We need to understand that. Now I want you to notice in our text in in verse number 20, it says, Wisdom crieth out. Um, it's a gospel cry. It's a cry of hell. Hear ye, hear ye! And yet men won't hear. It's good tidings. It's good news to the lost and dying world. Look in Luke chapter 1. Or like Luke chapter 2, I'm sorry. Luke chapter 2, and verse number 9 and 10. Um, no, verse 10 and 11 is what I want. And the angel said unto them, this is where the shepherds were keeping their flocks, and the angel of the Lord appeared to them and told them of Jesus who was born. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to who? To all people. God's wisdom is in Christ is unto all people. Now why won't all people receive it? Because there's some that refuse to receive the wisdom that's in Jesus Christ. Verse number 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You see that? Now there's wisdom right there. The Savior is born. There's great joy. Christ has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and all other things we need. They're all found in the, in the embodiment of Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. Uh, that's what the book of 1 Corinthians says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 30. Uh, let me read verse number 30 of the 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We just had this in Sunday school. But unto him, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That's what Christ has made unto us as believers. Now, we need to see this, a cry of the wisdom um, he just read a while ago from the 12th chapter. Solomon had all of his wisdom. And that queen in the south came and heard of the wisdom that he had spoken. And the half had not been told her. But Jesus said there in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew there, a greater than Solomon is here. And you think Solomon's wise? This is the one who gave him the wisdom. This is wisdom personified. This is Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? A greater than Solomon is here. So what do you mean he's here? You want scripture for that? Listen to what I'm saying. Jesus told his church, you go and you herald, you cry out. 
the gospel message, and the whole lost. You baptize the people that believe, and you teach those that believe the all things of the Word of God, whatever God's Word says. And then it says this, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. You think the Lord Jesus Christ is not here today? I'm telling you, He's passing by, and He is wisdom personified. Wisdom is crying out, He's crying out to you. If you're lost today without Christ, then Christ is everything that you need. All of the wealth and the riches and the glory and everything. If you're a poor sinner, Jesus Christ is the riches that you need. You see, everything you need. If you're blind, then He's the one that can give you sight. If you're dead, He's the one to give you life. He is made unto you Wisdom in all things. Hear ye. And the truth is, hear his son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. He is the wisdom of God. Now, this cry of wisdom. Notice his call to us. And it is a call to us. Look what our text says here. Um, in um, Proverbs back here, in chapter 1. I'm going to Ecclesiastes and everywhere else for him. In Cle- Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice to where at? In the streets. You see that? The gospel is heard before we desire it. Did you desire the gospel when you, even when you heard it, you didn't desire it? Not until God caused you to make you thirsty for it. You see that? Blessed are they. Gospel's clear and call to all the world. Whoso is wise will hear. Now, where does that wisdom come from? Christ has made wisdom to us. He that hath ears, let him hear. Wisdom cries out. Others his voice in the streets. Notice what else it says here. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? The scorners delight scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I'll pour my spirit upon you. What happens when he pours his spirit upon you? You begin to desire the things of God, and there's a fear of God given to you that we talk about. Uh, That's what really true religion is all about. We find in that text there, The gospel is heard is, is heard before we desire it. The gospel clarion calls to all the world. And the message of the gospel is to all people. I want to say that again. It's to all people. Whether they receive it or not, it's to be to all people. That's what the text said in Matthew, uh, in Luke. Whoso is wise will hear. He that hath ears to hear them. Wisdom stands in the head of the streets, in the busy places, in the bustling with the people. And it's saying, hear ye, hear ye. What are they supposed to hear? How Christ died and how he was buried and how he rose again. And in that he came, not even before that, he lived in perfect wisdom before God in absolute righteousness. Everything you need make you what you ought to be. He's it. You see that? The glorious duty of the saved is to herald the tidings of the gospel in the marketplaces. And so on. Wherever men are, the gospel is free preached. Men and women, wherever they are in their lives, if they're old, if they're young, wherever they are, the gospel, when you find them, preach the gospel to them. Now here's the problem today. We need to give out the gospel. Woe be me if I preach not the gospel, what Paul said. 
Christ, the wisdom of God. The gospel concerns the person and the work. Christ and Him crucified. You see, that's Christ and His work. I determined to know nothing about you but Christ and Him crucified. That's Christ and His work. That's His person. His work that He did at Calvary to redeem sinners. Today, we are much the guardians of the doctrines. We are so concerned. Well, make sure you get all the T's and the I's and all that across and the I's dotted according to doctrine. But are we heralding the gospel to sinners? That's what we're supposed to be doing, brethren. Wherever we're at, and you say, well, they won't let me do it in the workplace. The Lord told you to, whether they told you to or not. Now, let me say something to you. You don't need to waste the boss man's time. You're supposed to be working and spend an hour and a half arguing religion and, and the gospel with somebody. You need to work with your hands and preach the gospel while you're working. That's what the Bible's saying to us here. We're the guardians of doctrines, but we're not the heralds of the Christ of God. To hold down truth is wicked. Do you understand when we have the truth of the gospel, we understand the way of salvation, we have the cure of the cancerous disease that's eating away and people are dying, going out into eternity without Christ and without hope. It's a wicked thing to hold the truth back. To hold down the truth is wicked. To evangelize is to propagate, is to protect, is to preserve the truth. Why is the truth failing today? Because Baptist churches are not propagating the truth of the gospel to the lost. We turned it around a long time ago. We need to get all the lost people into the church so the preacher can preach the gospel to them. You won't find that on the pages of the book. What you find... Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go where they are. If God saved you, that's what he saved you for, to be a herald. To, to cry out the gospel to the lost. Who else is going to call? You think the lost people are going to tell lost people about Christ? They don't even understand. You think religious people that are not saved are going to tell people how to be saved? They don't even understand. But if you've been born again and you know Christ the Savior, you ought to know how to propagate the gospel to others. We've got the internet. We've got radio. We've got television. We've got every other means of communication. Uh, cell phones. And yet we communicate everything else but the gospel to people. You see that? This is what we're saying. The cry of wisdom. The cry of wisdom is the cry of the gospel. And it's the glorious duty of the saved to do so. We don't herald the truth of the gospel because we don't want to. There's the problem. And why don't we want to? Because when men when we herald the truth of the gospel, then we know and understand. We're not stupid. We know that people are not going to like us. They're going to hate us for the very gospel that Christ Jesus stands for. And yet, brethren, and our Baptist forefathers were heralds of the gospel of Christ Jesus, and they preached it even though they were put in the dungeon. We need to get back to that, brethren. Don't be afraid to preach the gospel. It's the wisdom of God. Wisdom is crying out. Don't you understand that we're all in bodies of clay that's going down to dust and going to wind up in dust, going to put in the box, but the soul is going to wind up in hell or in heaven, and there's no way it can wind up in heaven unless the gospel is preached. You see what I'm saying? I said again, we don't herald the truth of the gospel because we don't want to. And yet God has commissioned us for that responsibility. We are to do so. You look at all four gospels. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. 
the glorious gospel that God uses to save the soul is to be proclaimed where at? Where is it supposed to be proclaimed? Well, look at our text. Wisdom crieth out. She utters her voice in the streets. So that's a street preacher. He sure is. We need to utter it out in the streets. She crieth in the chief places of concourse. What's that? That's where business is. People are doing all kinds of business, carrying on their life. You need to work around to the gospel of Christ Jesus. Wisdom cries out. God uses that to save people. It's without. Do you realize that we were without? And without God one time and out, outside the church, outside the, the, the covenants of promise and somebody came and preached the gospel to us in love and compassion and God began to deal in our hearts and somebody else watered it and first thing you know God saved us because somebody cared enough to preach the gospel. It's from faith to faith what the book of Romans says. You see what I'm saying? It's in the streets. It's in the busy places. It's not just inside the church buildings where the gospel's supposed to be preached. You see that? Now, I've done this at work some, and then some of them look at me like I'm a nut when I preach the gospel. But it doesn't make any difference. That wisdom is crying out. Now, what is the aim then? You know, you take a gun, and you aim. So, what is what? What's the idea? What's the aim? What's the purpose? is to reach all with the gospel. So what about the scientific field? Well, you need to reach the scientists with the gospel. They need the gospel too. That's to learn. You need to learn uh, to those that are in politics. They need the gospel. To those who are in business, they need the gospel. To those people that are on vacation, in time of recreation, it's a time to preach the gospel. You see that? Wisdom cries out in all aspects of life. The gospel is always appropriate. It's right. It's a savor of life unto life and death unto death. what it is and it will not return to God void but it shall, re re it shall bring forth that which God sent it forth for turn with me to Isaiah Isaiah 55 verse 10 says for as the rain cometh down from the and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, so shall my word, which goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall be not return unto me, Lord, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing which whereunto I sent it. Does that mean everybody's going to be saved? No. What it means is God's going to save whom he will, and whom he will he'll harden with the same word of truth. But here's the thing. When we become heralds of the gospel of Christ to the lost and we declare to them in love and compassion how Christ died to save sinners and they reject that, we have delivered our soul. We weep over them. We've done everything we can for them. And then it becomes between them and God. See, it's not going to return to God, Lord. God got a purpose in the heralding of the gospel. We need to see this. It does accomplish the eternal purpose and divine purpose of God. Our glorious duty is to herald the gospel. Do you realize what a privilege it is? You think about, here's the man or the woman that's chosen to go before the, some great king and and be the herald and say, Hey, the king is coming. The king is here. The mighty king of this land. Well, let me tell you something. We've got one that's far greater than that. We can, we can talk about. Yet we talk about everything else except that which is the most important. 
We argue amongst Baptists about the, the people are arguing about whether you're supposed to use wine or grape juice. And they this fuss and fight, and you're not a church, and this and fussing against that one, and I think the, the grape juice are more gracious than the others are, but anyway, they're arguing over that. The Bible says it's fruit of the vine. I'll leave it at that. Let people have some freedom according to the dictates of their own conscience. And get busy and preach the gospel to the lost and quit arguing whether or not which one is. People are dying going to hell. And we don't care. It's the truth of the matter. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. It also says, Love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to go and tell him the gospel story of Jesus Christ with a compassionate, broken heart. Because you know where he's going without Christ. That's the point. Our duty is to declare the gospel, the glad tidings. It is the power of God and the salvation to all that believe. Romans chapter 1. And it's from faith to faith. Faith always comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Somebody has to be the preacher. How can they believe on whom they are not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? Well, somebody said, well, a preacher is supposed to do all the preaching. He's supposed to No. I'm supposed to do the preaching maybe in the pulpit here and teach you, but it's to prepare you so that you can go out and we come in to worship and you go out there to serve. And when you go out there to serve, you're going out there with the idea of heralding the gospel story, all that you know about Christ to the lost. So they might be saved. Now let me say something. It starts in wisdom by you living your life in a godly manner according to the truth of the word of God, somebody says, you know, you're kind of different from the rest of the people. Why are you so different? And then you begin to give them a, the reason of the hope that's in you because you understand that Christ Jesus died for you and because Christ died for you, he died for Listen, our Baptist forefathers used to go and they would make their, their goods and they would peddle their goods. Some of them pretty good craftsmen and they would peddle it and They'd peddle it, sell it, they'd go two by two, just like Jesus taught in the scriptures. And they'd go and and they'd sell everything they had and then, and they'd say, Well, you got anything else? I said, Yeah, we got something else. Something that's more valuable than anything else we ever sold you. I said, What's that? Did you ever hear of a man named Jesus? Did you ever hear about how Christ died for sinners? Have you ever been if you ever been truly born again of the Spirit of God? And they begin to really deal with them about the things of God. Some of them died for that. Some of them, God used them where there were people gloriously saved by the grace of God. Now I want you to notice when we look at that, the gospel is to whom? Think about this. Who is it to? Well, listen to what it says here in our text. It says it's to the simple, doesn't it? You don't have to have a college graduation. Doesn't, you don't have to be very smart to understand the gospel. It says it's to the simple. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? You see that? It's to the ignorant. And there are a lot of ignorant people in the world. It's the truth. They're just like this ignorant preacher. I'm not very smart. I know what God said. That's all I know. It's to the scorners. That's what he says right here. How long, you simple ones, verse 20, how long, will you love, and the scorners delight in their scorning? You see that? It's also to the fools. You see that? It's to the wayward woman that was at the well, wasn't it? Didn't Jesus go there and said, I that speak unto thee in he when Christ is come. He'll tell us all things. Is not this the Christ? 
Here, she went and testified, here's a man told me everything. Is not this Christ? God transformed and changed her life. What did she understand? The wisdom of the gospel of Jesus Christ came to her. What was she? She had had five husbands, and the one she had was she was living in adultery, in a state of adultery at the time. Jesus told her of sin, told her remedy of sin. Jesus Christ himself was the remedy. you got a sin problem today. I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ died to redeem sinners just like you. He didn't come to save good people. Listen to me carefully. You might think, so, well, I'm a pretty good person. I ain't done things too bad. You don't have to do anything. Just be born. You're a sinner. You understand that? You're born dead in trespasses. And you need to be born again so you can understand Jesus Christ died for you as a sinner. And when you receive that, He's made wisdom to you unto salvation. That's the Scriptures able to make you wise unto salvation through the Word of God. It's to the fallen. The woman taken adultery, neither do I condemn thee. It's to the publican, as Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus, come down. I must abide at thy house today. That was the call of Jesus Christ personally to him, wasn't it? And let me say this. That gospel call is a personal call. It's an effectual call. How is the gospel to be received upon hearing? Turn ye. You see what it says in verse 23? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my spirit upon you. I will make known my words to you. But notice, turn you. What is that? That's repent and believe the gospel. It's a reproof to sinners, yet it's better news than they ever heard. Notice there's a promise in this. What does he say? I will pour my spirit upon you and I'll make known my words unto you. You'll know the truth of my words. And I am the truth. That's what Jesus said. There's a promise to you. We're saved by promise. There's light to you who are in darkness. There's pardon to those that are guilty. There's purity to those who are defiled. There's love to those who are unlovable. There's increasing knowledge. There's strength to those who have no strength. There's peace to those who have no peace. There's eternal life. There's assurance that comes through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. There's security in Christ Jesus. If Christ died and we understand Christ, who shall lay anything that's charged of God's elect? It's Christ that died. God delivered him up for us all. Now, who's going to charge us with sin? There's security there in the person of Christ Jesus, you see. He goes on and on. There's gratitude. You know what? When God saves a poor, wretched sinner and they're truly saved from their sins and the lost condition that they're in, and there becomes a joy and a gratitude in their heart that they can't do anything but rejoice. Be glad in their souls with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Gratitude, thankfulness unto God for saving them from their unworthy condition. There's also growth. You start out as a babe in Christ and you grow and you grow and you grow. You can study the book for... You think about a man that was in the Roman Catholic movement. God saved him. God gave him wisdom. God called him to preach. He was in the ministry for 50 years. And he could spound, I'm talking about Al Gormley, he could spound the Word of God uh, when he was 80-something years old better than people could when they were... What is that? It's growth. How's it come? There's salvation from penalty. There's deliverance. There's power. There's heaven. And there's a presence of God right down in your soul. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like it. You may be sleepy and worn out in body today, but there, there's nothing like it. 
It's like what Peter said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's like the psalmist said, my cup runneth over. You understand that? It didn't used to run over because it filled up with sin. It was vile and unclean. But now it's washed away in the blood of Christ. It's the only remedy for sinners. It's the person of Christ Jesus and his finished work. It cries out in the streets. God in his great wisdom built his church and that kind of church has been propagating that wisdom of Christ Jesus all over this world, building those same kind of churches that started with the church at Jerusalem and those kind of churches all over the world. Still glorifying God. There's some in China we don't even know about. Some Baptist brethren. I got a book right now. Paid eight dollars ninety-five cents. Used book, but I paid eight. But it's a story of uh, uh, a true story of some Baptist missionaries that were in Peru that were shot down by the Peruvian government by fighter planes. That's the way the book starts out. They're shooting us down. And some of them survived the crash because the pilot was able to land it in the, in the river. But some of them died. Some of them were shot and killed. That's a part of the trail of blood. That's 1980-something. That's in our lifetime when this happened. I found that book over at the used bookstore. I said, boy, I need to read this. A young woman and a young man they started out in their 60s, I think. She was a member of Calvary Baptist Church and somewhere in Michigan. And he came there from somewhere else and became a member there and they met there in that church. Said, as a teenager, Lord, if you want me to go to the mission field, I'm willing. That's what she said. He was saying the same thing in her heart. And when they married, that's what they committed to, is going and preaching the gospel. And they were shot down. Some of their family members were killed. What were they doing? Because they were heralding the gospel of Christ Jesus. What were they doing with the airplane? They were taking a little Cessna and going up here, landing in the airport, going in and preaching the gospel to people with a loudspeaker, and then going to land in another where they had a church. I can't even pronounce the name of the town where they was planning on the land, but they didn't make it. What is it? It's a herald of the gospel of Christ Jesus. What a ministry. What a life. What a privilege is mine to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus. You know, these people get all excited. The lottery gets up about 200 million. They go all the pieces, get all excited about, oh, I got all this money. You're going to die and leave it to somebody else. You're going to lose it all anyway. Don't mount the hill of beans. And I'm preaching to you the riches that you can't buy. And it's a free gift in Jesus Christ given to you of the Spirit of God. I'll pour my Spirit upon you. Here, turn, it's yours. Somebody says it's too good to be true. No, it ain't. It is the wisdom that cries out. And Jesus Christ is that wisdom. You don't think it's that wisdom personified? You read that eighth chapter, and before the world was founded, I was with God, what he said. Who is he? He's wisdom. And that's what he's talking about in that chapter. He is the wisdom of God. And what's he do? He makes us to know by the Spirit of Christ in us the things of God, and we couldn't know it any other way. You see that? Glorious truth. Are you lost today? Hear the gospel. Come to Christ right now in your sins. And receive Him. And there's eternal life. 
in Christ Jesus. Let's stand the same. The Lord's dealt in your heart. You come. Oh